Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Somebody has physical wounds and there's no reason for it. Who has redness of eyes? And then he answers his questions. Those who linger long at the wine. Those who go in search of mixed wine. They don't look on the wine when it is red. Do not look on the wine when it is red. When it sparkles in the cups. It has a deceptiveness. It has a beautiful draw to it. Be careful with that. When it swirls around smoothly, at the last, it bites like a serpent, stings like a viper. I didn't call it a snake. God called it a snake. Do you know what alcohol is in excess? It's a poison. This is what the doctors say. And technically, if you've drunk too much, you are intoxicated. And if you are over 0 .08, you are intoxicated. To be intoxicated means you have a toxin in your body. Right. A toxin is another word for poison. And guess what? Coffee does not sober you up. Cold shower, the only thing that will help somebody who's had too much alcohol is time. Nothing, sobers, nothing can sober you up. That's scary, isn't it? God, God are you trying to scare us? Mm-hmm. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. But again, you know the strange thing for me is, wouldn't it have been easier if God would have treated alcohol like He did uh, premarital sex? I mean, just hear me out. What's God say about premarital sex? I don't want you to be addicted to premarital sex. Timothy, a little premarital sex, that'll help you out in your relationship. I know you're frustrated and you're not married yet, and so a little premarital sex won't hurt you. doesn't say that, does it? See, there's, there's, we have to understand, compare what God's prohibitions from one area to the other. Where am I at? Verse 33, your eyes will see strange things. You can't trust it, it, it distorts your judgment and it gives you greater confidence. For no reason. You have more confidence and less judgment. And you lose inhibitions. By the way, who knows that inhibitions are a good thing? Raise your hand. They're good. Raise your hand, folks. Come on. Inhibitions are good things. You wouldn't say that if you weren't drunk. You wouldn't have done that if you're not drunk. It's not just killing some people. People have lost their purity because of alcohol. They weren't thinking. People have been raped because of alcohol. So it says, your eyes will see strange things and your heart will utter perverse things. Yes, you will be like one who lies down in the middle of the sea. Bed spins is the modern word for that. Everything's moving. Nausea. You'll be like one who lies down at the top of the mast saying, they have struck me, but I was not hurt. They've beaten me, but I didn't feel it. And when, 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 when shall I awake that I may seek another drink? You can have the worst experience of the world, but it draws you back to it. Right. Over and over again. Chapter 31, and then we'll close. Let me tell you why people drink. Why some people drink. And why some people do drugs, because I've done both in my life before I was a Christian. There was a commercial years ago. This is your brain. This is your brain on drugs. Frying the egg. Anybody remember that? And that, that commercial was done by a, a, a non-drug uh, user, I think. That commercial was done by somebody who didn't have a deep pain in their life. Do you know that some people that take alcohol and drugs know that it's bad? They know it's bad. I'd say mo most of them do. I did. And there's only one thing worse than what the drugs and the alcohol do for you, and that is the reality of what you're living with in your home. I know it's bad, but it was, it was just an escape. Am I justifying it? No. Did it hurt me? Terribly. Have I hurt others because of it? Absolutely. Absolutely. But people do it, and you know why? That's, this is where the gospel comes in. People do it because that pain is worse than the pain they're dealing with. They want, to get, they want to escape. So we can pound on the alcoholics and the druggies, or we can love them. 
We can say we don't want you here, or we can say we want all of you here. Because John 4 says that we have something that you can drink that will satisfy you. Amen. Living water. Amen. We have something that will make you giddy. You hang out with Bill Head and Wayne Ray a little bit and you'll think they're on something. <laughs> but it's the joy of the Lord. Bill Boykin. You look at Bill, he, look, he looks like a wrestler. looks like he wants to tear you apart. He's got that stern face. Bill Boykin's got the joy of the Lord, though. I hang out with him. He loves the Lord. People know it. Bill Boykin shows up at a house, people are glad to see him for, for a lot of good reason. I, I don't want the gloomiest church in town. Let's be filled with the Spirit. Let's be filled with the Scripture. Let's be filled with the living water. And lastly, let's, that's the control. I jumped ahead to control, but listen to what a mother said to a son who was in leadership. So I close with a word to the leaders here. The words of King Lemuel, the utterance which his mother taught him. This is a pre-thank you mom's Mother's Day word. What my son and what son of my womb and what son of my vows. Wonderful beginning. How intimate. You are the son of my womb. How personal is that? That's, I mean, we talk about the connection that a mom has with her kids. And you, you've seen this before. I'm a athlete and I watch all these uh, TV uh, sports programs and the, the kid is, is playing football and he's just scored a touchdown and the camera's on the bench and, and he's got two seconds to say something and every time he'll say, hi mom. You, might, you know how many times mom threw a football with her son? Counted on one hand. Dad, 10,000 times threw a football. But what do they say? Hey, Mom! What, do we chop liver? What's up with this, right? But that's what God did. That's what God does to the womb. Yvonne Sutterth is going to have a baby, and you have that beautiful blessing in the womb, and there's something connective. I, I remember my kids hurting their knee, and we've been on a playground, and I'm three feet away, and Alexis is on the other side of the city, and they run right by me looking for Mom. I can fix that. But there's something built in that says, no, I need mom. And that's God's gift to you ladies, by the way. Amen. You listen to some ladies in this world, it sounds like motherhood's a curse. They read their Bible, oh, God wants all those ladies barefoot pregnant stay in the kitchen. I have not read that. At all. Son of my womb, son of my vows. And notice what she says. <laughs> she warns her son about women and wine. 